This is a painting that was probably commercially done. It doesn't tell a great story. We don't really know that much about it. It's, uh, you know, but, you know, is the water that color? A uh, really bright, sunny day, it could be. Is the sky really that color? You know, uh, so, yeah, maybe the artist took a little license and exaggerated the colors. Uh, and um, so it just is a really nice, attractive painting. Uh, and just as a hanger, it's not going to tell a great story. It doesn't have any historical background that we know. It just is very pleasing. And so. And then for something a little bit different, we have a great little photograph uh, inscribed at the bottom, Captain Cook's boy on board the USS Ranger, 1887. This great little image and uh, the captain's cabin boy dressed out in his little navy uniform. Uh, you know, interesting idea to bring along a boy on board your navy ship. Um, but that was the, the you know, practice at the time. But even the boy has a straight little attitude on his, in his, in his self, in his portrait. And, uh, you know, just an interesting little thing. Again, not, not a great masterpiece, but really captures that late 19th century kind of optimism and uh, broad American, you know, go get them attitude. So I think Let's finish with those and then I have a surprise for right, Kevin's got a surprise for him. Kevin brought me a present. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so these are, are done by a guy named Frank Adams of Martha's Finger. And uh, Frank Adams was a vacuum set, uh, repair person on Martha's Finger. And uh, one day he decided he needed a weather vane for his garage. So he made himself one uh, and put it up and then neighbor came and said, hey, I like that, can you make me one? And before you know it, he had a little business going and he wasn't fixing vacuums anymore. <laughs> and so this is what happens when you actually keep one inside and you put one outside. So that one is literally going through a lot of storms, a lot of Northeasters on Martha's Vineyard like they have been this week. And here's one that Frank Adams made and probably was never outside. They're very collectible, people love them, uh, and they're wood pull and they're uh, tin sails, and that is one that is pretty much untouched as he made it, probably in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that went for a lot of stories. You know, all our talks are impromptu and spur of the moment, so I thought I'd keep Arthur on his toes. Uh, two of our visitors brought a ship painting for us to look at and, uh, and kind of analyze and see what it is. And this is a little bit of how do you know it's old? Uh, what is it? Where does it come from? And we've got, got over a few of these things on our forums, which you can see some of our forums from uh, on YouTube. We have some of our forms from the past. Um, and the first one I think we ever did was How Do You Know It's Old? And so this is a really nice little ship painting, very crisply painted, uh, has the waves, the American flag. Oh, one thing I'd like to say about the American flags. So typically in ship portraits, the flag is flying proudly behind the ship, showing its broad stripes. Uh, but that's actually a fallacy because the ship cannot sail faster than the wind. So it's all going in the same direction. And if you look at the ship at Brig Exact, in the upper right corner, you get got it right. The flag is going with the ship, because it's being pushed by the wind, although he got on board later and added it with the flags flying behind the ship. So. A little artistic license. Yeah, you know, it looks better that way. It gives you that sense of motion, sense of speed. And maybe there's a certain way you can turn your ship to get it. Um, anyway, so one thing that we like to do when we 
start to analyze a piece, we look at the back. So, Arthur, what do you see? It's a wood panel. It's freshly painted. It has a scribe mark. I don't see a signature. Um, so I would have to guess that maybe it's either been repainted or it's uh, maybe a copy. And so one of the things that I did when I first saw it, I got a head start. So I grabbed my loop and it's a very, very, very helpful tool for paintings, furniture, uh, all sorts of glass, brass. You can see a lot of details. Just a little bit of magnification can tell a whole big story. So when you look at the front of the painting now, under the loop, you look at the, how the paint was applied to the panel. And panel, you know, so you're painting on panel, you're painting on canvas. Even panel will have a little bit of shrinkage and contraction, shrinkage and expansion over time. And that will give you a fine network of crackler through the surface of the paint. And Arthur probably doesn't even need the loop. I thought, yeah, there's no crackler. There's, there's no crackler. There's no shrinkage. There's no shrinkage. And I, get, I think I'm getting Kevin's point because we bought a fake uh, a couple of years ago. And we thought it was good. And I admit it was a fake and we were fooled. But that's why we do a lot of research and we make sure uh, that we have things checked out if we have even the slightest question. And uh, it turned out that it was not right. And I think this might be by the same hand. Uh, well, I wasn't going there. I wasn't necessarily. <laughs> you know, he's really setting me up. <laughs> no, no, no. You're on the right track. It's not old. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily consider this a fake because there's really no. Uh, attempt to deceive. It's just it's newly painted on the back. There's no signature saying it was made by a famous artist. Uh, there's no added track alert to the front. So it's a reproduction. It looks like it's a painting from the 19th century, maybe late 19th century, but it's probably 20th century, mid 20th century at the earliest, maybe 10 years old or so, uh, or when did you buy it? 20 years ago. Okay, 20 years <laughs> old or so. <laughs> uh, um, you know. So, there was a book written, which I read three or four years ago, about a faker in Florida who got really good and was copying Buttersworth paintings. Buttersworth are very valuable ship paintings, and he got really good at it. And they ended up in museums. They ended up in major dealers' hands. Fortunately, we did not get nailed. This is always the nightmare that I have, which I started having those nightmares when I was first in it as a kid. What if you buy something and you find out later after you sold it that it's a fake? It's a nightmare. And um, the only thing you can do is stand behind it and take it back, of course. But it is, it is the nightmare that no matter how many senses you have of touch, smell, hearing, and you know, it's just all your senses come into every time we buy something, every time we look at something. And, but if there are people out there who are trying to perfect the art of fakery, it's pretty hard. Now, let's see, what did they do? Oh, they just discovered that the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls are not real. I mean, yes. I mean, some, yeah, some of them. Yeah, one of yeah. I mean, just think about that. I mean, that shatters so much of, you know, biblical history, of everything. And so, you know, you that's what we do. We don't have always at our fingertips all the scientific equipment that would take months or perhaps years to actually ascertain 
we just go with the best we got. And but that one, I thought when Kevin told me it was a surprise, I thought, I don't know, because <laughs> this fake that we found recently, and you know, it's it's a lesson. Every time you do, you learn. It's it's a, you know, we all are. We all make mistakes, nobody's perfect, but you know, you try to do your best. And I thought that's what maybe I was done by the same hand, but <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't no, as good. No. It wasn't as good. No.